Welcome back everyone to our TAE certification training series. In our last session, we discussed the capture, playback approach and linear scripting. Today, we are exploring next two approaches, which are structured scripting and data-driven testing. Okay, so what is structured scripting? Uh, we discussed linear scripting uh, previously. The major difference between the structured scripting technique and linear scripting technique is the introduction of a script library. So a script library contains reusable scripts that perform sequences of instructions that are commonly required across a number of tests. Uh, in other words, instead of duplicating the same sequence of actions in multiple places, you can create a script for that sequence and store it in the library. Good examples of such scripts are those that interface, for example, to the operations of system under test interface. In simpler terms, it means that these scripts are particularly useful when they are designed to automate the testing of how a software system interacts with external components, services, or user inputs. Uh, let's consider a scenario where you are testing a web application that requires user authentication. Uh, one common action is logging into the application. Let's check how uh, this scenario would be handled using both linear and structured scripting techniques. We'll be taking a deep dive into this piece of code. It's not officially part of the syllabus and we are covering it only for better understanding. Uh, now, I do understand that we have a diverse audience. Some of you are new to test automation and you might find this detailed breakdown extremely valuable. However, if you are an experienced tester, like experienced automation tester and uh, are already familiar with this, then please feel free to skip to the next slide. So let's dive right into the code. Okay, so in this step, the script imports the web driver class from Selenium. Uh, so this slide, this piece of code is uh, for linear scripting. So the first one is, uh, the first line is importing the web driver class from Selenium. I have written this example code in Python using Selenium, but it's important to know that similar functionality can be achieved in various programming languages. So um, uh, just wanted to point out that uh, it's not only Python, you can use other programming languages as well. This is only to explain. Okay, moving on. Right, so the next one, this step, uh, we initialize a web driver for the Chrome browser, which establishes a connection to the Chrome browser for automated interactions with web pages. Okay, what's happening next? In this step, once we have initialized the browser, this step navigates to a specific website known as www.example.com. It simulates opening the website in the browser. In this step, the script finds an HTML element with a link text login on the web page and stores it in the login button variable. Then it simulates a click action on this button navigating to the login page. In this next step, the script locates three HTML elements, the username input field, password input field, and the submit input field. Sorry, not input field, button. It stores references to these elements in variables. Then it uses the send keys method to simulate typing test user into the username field, secret password into the password field and click to simulate clicking the submit button, submitting the login form. In this step, the script locates an HTML element with a CSS selector welcome message, which displays a welcome message upon successful login. 
it checks the text content of this element and prints login successful if the text matches welcome test user otherwise it prints login failed and finally after completing the interactions with the web pages verification the script uses the quit method to close the web browser ensuring proper cleanup of resources so now when we have taken a look at the uh, entire code this script represents a linear step-by-step -step approach to automating a user login process i hope this one is clear and now let's move on to the next example which is for structured scripting with reusable library um, let's directly go to uh, this step uh, where a reusable function named launch and login is defined this function encapsulated the entire login process it takes three parameters browser username and password now what this function is doing it's performing few steps number one navigating to the website number two it clicks the login link number three locates and fills in the username and password fields and number four click the submit button next look at this part of the script which executes the test case what it is doing is it's calling the launch and login function with the specified username and password to perform the login process the next steps are the same as before, so we are not going through it. Now, if we compare the previous example and over here, the difference is that in this one, we have uh, created a function named launch and login. So whenever you need to perform a login action in different test scripts, you do not have to rewrite the same sequence of login steps each time like in linear scripting. Instead, you can simply call a launch and login function. Okay, now let's go through uh, some pros and cons of structured scripting. So um, the first advantage is reduced maintenance. A significant reduction in the maintenance changes required and the reduced cost of automating new tests because they can use scripts that already exist rather than having to create them all from scratch. So now uh, if we take our example, if there is a change in the login process, you only need to update the launch and login function in the script library. This change would automatically apply to all the test cases uh, that uses this function. So on the other hand, uh, other hand, in the linear approach, each test case login process would need to be updated individually. The next one is cost efficient automation. The advantages of structured scripting are largely attained through the reuse of scripts. More tests can be automated without having to create the volume of scripts that a linear scripting approach would require. This has a direct impact on the build and maintenance cost. The second and subsequent test will not take as much effort to automate because some of the scripts created to implement the first test can be reused again. Okay, so uh, coming back to our login example, creating a new test case requiring login involves simply calling the launch and login function. This reusability cuts down on the time and effort needed to create and maintain new tests. Along with the pros, there are also some cons as well. So let's go through that. First of all, initial investment. The initial effort to create the shared scripts can be seen as a disadvantage. But this initial investment should pay big dividends if, if approached properly. So the initial effort to develop the launch and login function in our example and set up the script library might seem higher than creating the simple linear script initially. Uh, but however, uh, this investment pays off as more test cases are added or the application changes. The second um, disadvantage is programming skills required. Programming skills will be required to create all the scripts as simple recording alone will not be sufficient. Uh, this could be more demanding than just recording steps in the linear approach. And the last one is 
management challenges. The script library must be well managed. That is, the scripts should be documented and it should be easy for technical test analysts to find the required scripts. So a sensible naming convention will help here. So I hope that structured scripting is now clear. Let's move on to the next one, which is data driven testing. OK, so let's go through it. The data driven scripting technique builds on the structured scripting technique. The most significant difference is how the test inputs are handled. The inputs are extracted from the scripts and put it in, put into one more separate files. Uh, one or more separate files typically called data files. OK, so here is how data driven testing can be applied to the login process. Number one, separating data. The login test script separates the data from the script itself. Number two, control script. A control script contains the sequence of instructions necessary from the test. It, it retrieves input data from a data file rather than having the data hard coded in the script. And the third one is reusability. The control script can be reused to implement multiple test cases rather than being limited to a single test. OK, so whatever we have read so far, let's try to understand it better by an example. So we have um, a data driven login script example over here that reads input data from an external CSV file. Let's go through the code. OK, in this step, we import the required libraries. We import CSV for reading data from a CSV file and the web driver, as we did previously, uh, it's a class from Selenium for browser automation. OK, so the next steps are the same as in the previous example, so we will skip those and come straight to this section. Here we read input data from an external CSV file named login data dot CSV. Uh, you will also uh, notice that there is a R inside the open function. Uh, this R specifies the mode in which the file is being opened. And in this case, R stands for read mode. OK, so next we use the CSV.reader to read the data row by row. We skip the first row, header row, using next reader. Inside the loop, we retrieve username and password from each row and call the launch and login function with these values. This loop allows us to test multiple login scenarios with different data sets. And um, I have also added a comment at the end, uh, which says that you can add additional verification steps within this loop to check the success of the login if needed. OK, so now let's go through the uh, advantages and disadvantages of data driven testing. So the first advantage of data driven testing is cost efficiency. The cost of adding new automated tests can be significantly reduced by this scripting technique. In our login example, instead of creating separate scripts for each user login scenario, you can use the same script with different data, thus saving time and effort in script creation. Next one is test variations. This technique is used to automate many variations of a useful test, giving deeper testing in a specific area and may increase test coverage. For instance, uh, you can test different usernames and passwords combinations to ensure that various login scenarios work correctly. This approach increases test coverage by exploring different scenarios. OK, another one is freedom for test analysts. Having the test described by the data files means that test analysts can specify automated tests simply by populating one or more data files. This gives test analysts more freedom to specify automated tests without as much dependency on the technical test analyst who may be a scarce resource. OK, so test analysts can focus on defining test cases without getting deeply involved in scripting. 
In addition to the pros, there are also a few cons associated with this approach. So let's go through them. The first one is data file management. The need to manage data files and make sure they are readable by test automation solution is a disadvantage, but can be approached properly. So let's again uh, go through our login example. In that example, maintaining the login data.csv file with accurate and up to date test data can be crucial. Uh, proper version control and data management practices will be required. The next one is missed negative test cases. Also important negative test cases may be missed. Negative tests are a combination of test procedures and test data. In an approach targeting test data mainly, negative test procedures may be missed. Okay, so data-driven testing primarily target test data variations. Uh, in our login example, if you only provide valid usernames and passwords in the data file, you might miss testing how the system handles incorrect login attempts. Okay, so I hope that data-driven testing is also clear. Right, so with this, we have now reached uh, the end of today's session. Next time, we'll go through the remaining test approaches. Until then, happy testing.